and scrounging the bottom of the barrel in search of funding for disaster aid. Now the feds may have to divert some money from one catastrophe over to another to help pay for Irene. Ron Paul on Fox News Sunday said FEMA has the worst reputation of any bureaucracy. Listen. We, we be condition our people that FEMA will take care of us and everything will be okay. But you don't, you try to make these programs work the best you can, but uh, you, you can't just keep saying, oh, they need money. Well, we're out of money. <laughs> yeah. Former director of FEMA, Michael Brown, joins us live. FEMA is facing cash flow problems as it works to help uh, victims of Hurricane Irene. The agency says the funds are running low and its solution? Diverting funds headed for Joplin, Missouri, where a massive twister destroyed a third of that city back in the month of May. Meanwhile, Ron Paul is saying that FEMA is a waste of money in the first place. Have you heard this? We're out of money. This country is bankrupt. So this idea that uh, uh, the bleeding heart will say, well, we have to take care of them. I mean, the whole idea of FEMA is to a gross distortion of insurance. Matter of fact, FEMA creates many of our problems because they, they sell the insurance because you can't buy it at, you know, from, a, from a private company, which means there's a lot of danger. That was from Fox News Sunday. He went on from there. Former FEMA director and undersecretary of Homeland Security, Michael Brown. Brown is my guest from Denver, Colorado. You remember him from the days of Katrina. How you doing, Mike? And good morning good, to you. Bill. Out good, Bill. Good to see you in Colorado. What about Ron Paul's comment? FEMA creates well, many of our problems. He's partially right in the sense that the country's broke. There's only a limited amount of cash available right now to spend on these projects. And what FEMA's done is something that FEMA's done traditionally throughout its budget crisis, and that is to say, in a, with an accounting mechanism, we're not going to spend money on long-term projects that we might not actually have to write a check for for a year or two, and instead we'll write checks for things that we have to pay today. But the problem is, and Dr. Paul, I think, really hits this correctly, FEMA has these problems every single year. And as long as we have the flood insurance program and we continue to more and more give out money through FEMA for some of these disaster programs, it will continue to face these problems. And, and that could be, and I think it's an excellent point, but now with the budget so strained and, and, right. and a deficit running 14 plus trillion dollars, a focus in Washington has changed. It's, it's, been, it's been put on its head and 180 it, degrees. Now, Eric and Cantor Bill, it's going, was it's on, going to have to. Yeah, Eric Cantor was with us yesterday, okay? What he's right, saying is that right. if you want to give my district money, fine, if we need it, uh, because of a disaster, but go ahead and cut spending elsewhere. I just want to play a clip from yesterday real quick with Martha. Sure. We will find the money uh, if there is a uh, need for additional monies. Uh, but where we are, Martha, um, is those monies are not unlimited. And what we've always said is we've offset that which has already been uh, funded. All right. Now, is that an opinion that will fly in Washington, or is that just one guy making his own case? Look, that's, that's an opinion that is going to hit the brick wall of reality. We don't have any money. Let's say that FEMA needs an additional $1 billion, just for, for round numbers. 42 cents of every dollar that they give FEMA will have to be borrowed, Bill, so we have to start making these choices. Let's put it this way. Let's say there's another tsunami in Japan, and Japan says to the United States State Department, we want you to send some urban search and rescue teams over. Who's going to pay for that? We don't have the money for, for right now to do it. We have to start making these hard decisions facing the fiscal reality that the country is broke. In the meantime, the folks in Joplin, Missouri are not happy about this, and you can understand why. And they shouldn't, I mean, they shouldn't I mean, the, be happy. The, the right. fatalities in that town, the way it was devastated, man. Right. What did you That's think exactly right. of the public officials' reaction before Irene came on shore? I, look, I, two points. I think the reaction prior to Irene hitting New York or Washington or any of the places in the Upper Northeast Corridor was exactly correct. They gave the proper warnings. They told people what to do. But what government officials failed to do was to de-escalate that once it became apparent that the eye wall was collapsing, that Irene was losing uh, power and strength. Then they should have come back and said, it's losing strength. You may be able to move back. But look, the American people have to understand that government officials post-Katrina 
are going to be scared not to give those warnings. At the same time, citizens have to listen closely. They have to pay attention to what government officials say, and they have to pay attention to what's actually happening on but, the ground. But if you make that audible in mid-storm, you, you know what these guys are thinking. They're thinking, if I, I still got to cover my rear on all this. You mentioned Katrina. But Bill. Yeah, yeah, but you mentioned right, Katrina. But, but, Do you think Katrina changed the reaction forever yes, on these storms? Absolutely. Because now you'll have Governor Christie, you'll have Bloomberg, you'll have uh, Governor Purdue and the others saying, look, our advice is you must evacuate, you must stay out of these low-lying areas. That is factually correct advice and good advice. But what they now have to learn to do is to understand that now the reality is the storm has lost strength and now those warnings maybe aren't quite as necessary. Let's have an honest conversation between government and the public about what's really occurring on the ground. All right, thanks I think for that your, goes for the yeah. media too. Yeah, I would agree with that also. Yeah, I mean, we're all in this together, you know. We share the responsibility. Yes, exactly. But it's the public officials who lead. And when they come out and make big statements, you know, the media companies react. When Michael Bloomberg, last Thursday at noon, came out and said people living in sky rises in New York, they better watch it because the windows could blow out. Well, how do you think we're going to react to that? It's going to be, whoa, well, of, of we've course, never seen that course, before. <laughs> But, but then I think you need to come back and when the storm kind of dissipates in New York City, you need to say, look, here's what's happening now. It's not yeah, quite as bad. It, yeah. appears, it appears to be safe. Now. Okay, on the next disaster, unfortunately, we're going to call back on you, okay? And we'll see where we are with the budget Absolutely. constraints and FEMA and where we spend our dollars most appropriately. Mike Brown out of Absolutely Denver, will. Colorado now. Thanks. Martha. But, you know, just yeah. want that on that. The great irony is that what they didn't do was they weren't nimble. They didn't say, well, you know what, the skyscrapers are not going to blow out windows in Manhattan, but folks in Vermont need to start evacuating these areas where the waters are rising. I mean, people got hit like it was coming out of nowhere. And so, you know, they, the, the same onus is on them to become to be flexible in the situation and honest about where it's heading next. Uh, so that's something that we need to think about as well.